Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the VEX World Championship, checking in an incredible team, 334U, Supernova U, last year's middle school world champion, and this year as well, Reinvent wins an excellence award as well too. This is an incredible robot. H-tier hang, which of course we'll be talking more about here, but a lot of cool stuff to go into going through their intakes and cool custom polycarb as well, and a lot of great things that make this robot awesome. So let's learn more about this team coming up on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Gabe, let's talk about your drive chain, especially the weight of it as well, too. Your team has paid a lot of attention to the weight of it, so talk to me more about that, and then we're going to start following that tri-ball journey into your intake. Yeah, so uh, our drive chain operates on a 600 RPM direct uh, on 2.75 wheels. We have two raised uh, easy wheels, which are custom tractions in the center here. This allows us to, go in combination with our tangent, tangent sleds and our boats, to go over the barrier extremely smoothly and increase our one ball cycle times. And so um, we'll show you our drive chain. Yeah, this is um, basically the fastest competitive ratio that you'll see. And um, we're pretty happy as we're able to run it on six motors because our robot is only 12.5 pounds due to all of our custom polycarbonate and weight reduction. Uh, next, I'll show you our intake. So uh, our intake, basically what makes it special is that it rests lower than almost every other intake at this competition. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to get underneath other robots' intakes and steal their tri balls while they're either single balling or while they're bowling. And it also helps with preventing our tri balls from being stolen. Uh, we have a passive top load. We don't use any trap door or anything like that, just the latex tube right here. We can outtake the ball through the top. We can keep it in there. We can move the intake up. It won't get stolen if, they get, if it gets bumped. And it's very effective at picking up tri balls as well. And that's our intake mechanism. Uh, we have it's double chain for consistency, and we have this frosted polycarbonate here uh, to protect the chain with a little flange. So, Gabe, let me ask. I'd love to hear about that more about that tri ball ceiling strategy. Is that something uh, that was in mind here for uh, Vex Worlds, or when did you uh, start doing something like that? Like, how did you even get the idea to go that route? Yeah. So, um, when we were preparing for the state championship, we realized that. Um, if we were able to use uh, the opponent's match loads to our advantage, it would provide a big strategic uh, bonus in both our scoring potential and taking away from the opponent's scoring potential. So um, we are able to steal, uh, in our last call, we stole seven tri balls from our opponents and, uh, through bowling and one bowling. And it's a very effective strategy that I think is underused. Hey, let's talk about weight on your robot here. You're doing a bunch of cool custom polycarb all the way through, so lots of great stuff with that. Talk to me more about your just general philosophy in regards to how your robot approached weight here in Over Under. With our strategy of being very nimble and agile around the field, we've led uh, our build to be more light and stable. And so basically, with this 12 and a half pound robot, we've been able to cut weight by using these polycarbonate sheets right here. It allows us to just maintain the 12 and a half weight that we wanted to achieve because we have such a fast drive ratio so that we don't burn out in the match. And so basically starting off, we have these gearboxes here that protect our chain during the match while also being able to protect the front of our intake. Basically, these intake wheels are still able to spin when they contact the barrier because we have these polycarbonate guards. Also in the back, we also have these custom gearboxes that are lighter than actually using a flat plane of metal or a metal tower. And this allows us to have a more rigid frame while also being able to have a very protective gearbox. And lastly, we have these polycarbonate wings that are actually kind of special. Basically, it is a piece of polycarbonate that's been bent upwards, and it allows us to have a very rigid uh, wing that also has some give, which allows our wing not to bend in the middle of a match, and allows us just to have more consistent and reliable robot. This is probably some of the thinnest polycarb I think I've seen too on a, on a robot so far. By the way, I'm very glad you didn't replace everything with polycarb. I'm not sure we're quite ready for that yet in the over-under game uh, to reduce so much weight for it. I just want to ask you from a weight standpoint as well too. Uh, have you noticed a difference by switching over to polycarb, by dropping a little bit extra weight? Has there been a difference for your team? Yeah, so basically with this lighter robot, we've been able to actually, not just during the match, but while we've actually been in the development of our robot, we've been able to code for longer and we've also been able to just play more defense and take on the defensive role a lot better in the match because we've been able to play the match without being burnt out and allows us to just have the full power of our 600 RPM drive at its fullest. And this allows us to out-compete a lot of robots, being able to speed past them over the barrier with these sleds and stuff. 
and allows us to just be more mobile and it uh, accompanies the strategy very well. And this polycarbonate also allows us to increase our mobility around the field with these sleds and boats and it just allows us to accompany our strategy very well of being agile and nimble around the field. Nicholas, we got to talk about this ace sheer hang that you're rocking as well too. Uh, phenomenal so far, especially you know with uncapped strategy. When that came out, that big announcement came. I'm sure you guys were excited about that. Yeah. Walk me through uh, what your hang is. Uh, any major changes we've seen from your states or in the World Championships as well? Yeah, so we've evolved the hang throughout the season, and at the beginning, it started out with simple balances, moved on to C tiers, B tiers, and through the end, after they removed the cap, we realized a big part, big part of the strategy to. Uh, that we can go and spend time into is hanging high as it gives you extra points that with the game going lower and lower of scores and uh, more defense basically uh, any advantage you can gain from autos or hang all gives you that uh, edge to win any uh, any match yeah so with our hang here it's an h tier hang that uh, flips up using uh, just these pistons here and bands it down so it's uh, hard stopped here with these kevlar strings here uh, for consistency and bands it with this latex tubing to keep it at the right height to attach onto the bar. Uh, over here, we have our hook. Basically, uh, it uses a poly and a flat channel to hook onto it, and it's more effective than other designs we've seen, such as standoffs, uh, as it has a better hook and uh, a faster hook on time. Uh, we use uh, a polycarbonate, basically, uh, guides here to help us hook onto the bar with more consistency. Um, yeah, so. Uh, with our uh, hang down here, we also use polycarbonate as a bracing form, uh, as it helps it keep more strength, uh, more strong, and it, it folds in like this down here. Sorry. To store it, it folds down here and keeps like that. See, it get down during the entire match. So uh, we power our H tier hang uh, with our six motors from our 600 RPM drive base. The way we we're able to do this is with a one piston PTO that pulls on both of these gears uh, with these custom polycarbonate slides. And basically what this allows us to do is it engages these gears uh, with the drivetrain. Uh, as you can see, we have vertically mounted motors here for space economy to fit the winch and the PTO. Um, so once these six motors are engaged, uh, our hang goes up with a lot of torque and very quickly. And it, it pulls on these strings and it winches down like this. The bands on the bottom stage will pull down like this, uh, allowing our uh, hang to fold down and get us H tier. Yeah, we can pick up the robot real quickly and show you uh, how it winches down. Well, 3 3 4 U Supernova U. Can't wait to see a course how you do here. Hopefully, of course, not a world championship now in high school. would be phenomenal, but this robot is really cool. Thanks for telling us more about it. There's a lot of great things teams can learn here, and good luck here at Worlds. Yep, thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.